Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 7 of the Typhoon series. Today we're going to have a look at a few small changes we've made to the rocket to get it to ready to fly as a pyro rocket. Now in a few days it's going to be flying on a J360 uh, for our level 2 certification attempt. So let's have a look at what's changed. So there are three upgrades we've made to the deployment mechanism to get it ready for the pyro flight. The previous deployment was a little anemic in terms of the ejection force. The rocket's likely going to be going at higher speeds at the time of deployment, so we were going to need more force to get that parachute clear. So let's fix that first. We have switched to 8 rubber bands in bundles of 2. The length of the rubber band was chosen so that it's at almost its maximum stretch when primed. Now at full stretch a single rubber band exerts about 26 newtons, to give a total of around 210 newtons or 20 kilos. Now 20 kilos is the equivalent of this thing full of water, so it's quite a bit of force. To be able to hold that much force back, we've made the levers a little thicker, but with a lever ratio of about 10 to 1, that was going to be putting a lot of force directly onto the servo horn. So we added a third 4 to 1 lever to reduce that down to about 2.5 newtons of force being put onto that servo motor. This needed us to reprint the lever bracket. The levers are just held in with pins made from small nails. Because of the new configuration we reprinted the motor and electronics brackets. So let's put it together. To lock the nuts into the print, I wired a nail to the end of the soldering iron and then just pressed it a couple of times next to the nut, and that seems to work well. We can now assemble the rest of it. The servo motor is press fit into the print, there's no need to screw it down. The next upgrade was to add the strato logger to detect apogee. With the water rocket the apogee is a lot more predictable so a timer was fine. But on the J, the Apogee could vary a little more, so it's better to detect it directly. And the batteries fit in their own bracket. Here it is all assembled and wired up. And here it is inside the previous cup and frame, since that didn't need an upgrade. Time to test the ejection force with the upgraded mechanism. We can see that it is a lot more effective in separating the nose cone and parachute from the rest of the rocket. Here is a comparison of the previous 5 rubber bands, and now with 8 rubber bands. And again you can see it's a lot stronger, we're happy with that. Next up it was time to test the electronics in flight. We wanted to see if the strato logger and servo timer are configured properly to drive the servo motor at Apogee. So we taped all the electronics to a bit of core flute and mounted it on one of our water rockets. And here is that flight. Three, two, one, go! Here is an onboard view looking back at the servo motor to see if it moves at Apogee. And that worked well, so we can mount the electronics back into the Typhoon rocket. We actually narrowly avoided a disaster when the rocket landed in a ditch and just managed to miss some water in it. Ok, back to the workshop, now to make the motor retainer. The retainer is made from a couple of 3mm thick aluminium L brackets. They're cut to size and drilled. We need to make a couple of threaded holes in the nozzle end of the rocket. We couldn't use the existing holes because they're already too big and are not threaded.
we're using a single M4 screw for each of the brackets. So we, here we've got the 54mm mounted, now it doesn't matter that these holes go all the way through uh, because they're actually behind the o-rings when we use the water rocket nozzle, uh, so that should all be good. And uh, that's not going anywhere. Okay, let's have a look at the motor itself. This is the 54mm 3 grain CTI case, the end closure just screws off. In order for the motor to properly transfer the force to the slightly larger motor tube, we made this thrust ring that fits over the case. And here we're adding a cardboard tube that acts as insulation between it and the fiberglass motor tube. It also has an open slot that allows hot air to escape past the motor from inside the sealed pressure chamber, preventing pressure from building up inside. And here's the propellant grain for the J360. Here I'm just making sure we have all the bits and of the right size and that everything fits together. We don't want to drive all the way to the launch site just to find out something's missing. This is the forward closure with the delay grain and ejection charge that we'll later remove. I'm not forcing the o-rings in because they're not properly greased yet. And here's the fuel grain. So that all seems to be a good fit and the motor should be good to go. We'll do the actual assembly on launch day. So that's it, the rocket's ready to fly. Join us in the next episode to see how that attempt went. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. So I didn't have the camera running, but we were machining the retaining ring for the motor. Uh, the only problem is, is that the lathe stalled, made a weird noise, and now it's not running. Um, so I've turned it off. Uh, so let's go have a look what's wrong with it, and let's see if we can fix it. So there's nothing obvious that we can see here. Um, let's take the motor cover off. Okay. I see where it is. Um, that probably shouldn't be like that. Uh, I'll get some sticky tape and we'll tape it back together. No. Okay, I think we're going to have to buy a new belt. Alright, we'll see you in a couple of days. <laughs> Three days later we got a package of a new belt so ho hopefully it's the right one so let's have a look looks pretty good so let's fit it into the lathe so in order to get the new belt in we have to take this guy off um, because that's I, where the belt pulley uh, likely Yep, that's the belt pulley. So let's fit the belt, the motor, and let's hope it's the right size. It's a really good fit. It's nice and tight. There's a an adjustment screw here, but that looks pretty good to me. All right, let's give it a test. Speed down, forward, and here we go. The lead is back up and running. All right, we can continue. Try reverse. Also running good. Job done, back to work.